I will do is uh, maybe the recording we will stop for some time. To set the stage. Sure. So before I get into management accounting education and, and the competencies, I wanted to set the stage by looking at why we need to be concerned about changing competencies uh, or the need for change for additional and different competencies. And I'll start by looking at the evolving role of the finance function. And there are three drivers of that changing role that I'll, I'll look at, strategic management, technology and analytics and business partnering. I'll look at the skills that management accountants will need to possess to succeed in the new uh, environment. I'll discuss what we need to do uh, to succeed. And finally, we'll have time for uh, questions and answers. So again, we're gonna start by looking at the evolving role of the CFO team. Now, this role has always involved uh, with the changing needs of business, but today that rate of change is unprecedented. You know, if you think about the past, and you know, I love this picture of a, a couple of businessmen probably from the 1960s. Uh, in the past, the main focus of the finance team was basically stewardship, right? The steward of the company's assets, it was, it was a focus on protecting value, uh, overseeing compliance with internal controls and complying with external reporting standards and regulations. And these functions are still very important and they're certainly not going away, but the role of the CFO team uh, is, is definitely changing. But today the finance function uh, is much more focus on value added activities. And it's moving from the delivery of data and results to the interpretation of information and contributing to decision making activities. So as, as the bold points here indicate the CFO team uh, applies its efforts to better supporting decision making, assisting in strategy formulation implementation, uh, more later, uh, employees enhance decision-making abilities, and then again, serves as a business partner. So as I mentioned, there are three drivers of this changing role. And I'll briefly discuss uh, each of those in turn. Uh, strategic management, technology and analytics, and the business partnering role. So first I'm gonna talk about uh, strategic management and the role that the finance team plays in the strategic management process. So the strategic management process uh, includes uh, strategic analysis, uh, strategy formulation, strategy evaluation, and strategy execution. And the CFO team nowadays has an important role to play in each stage of this process. So the CFO needs to be, the CFO or representatives of the CFO team, they need to be at the strategy table. It has to help analyze the company, uh, analyze the competitive environment, and help formulate the strategy. Uh, the CFO team has, should have unique skills that help it synthesize information uh, add foresights, make recommendations regarding uh, strategy of the organization and how it should be executed. Then there's the specific responsibilities that the CFO team has, such as capital allocation, uh, potential merger, mergers and acquisition, uh, creating performance metric system, uh, and, and so on. But, and finally, the CFO team has a key role in communicating the strategy to investors and other stakeholders. So moving on to technology and analytics, I wanna briefly discuss the, the role of, of technology and analytics as it relates to the changing role of the CFO team. 
And there are four components of that that I'll talk about, including big data, uh, robotics process automation, or RPA, data analytics, and data visualization. So you know, this is the era of big data, right? Data, uh, is, data generation is, is doubling every two years, which is just mind boggling, I, th I think. It's giving rise to what we call big data, data that's too big for traditional database management systems. Uh, it can be structured or unstructured, and it can be gleaned from a whole host of sources, including uh, mobile devices, the internet, uh, RFID tags, digital cameras, and, and so on. And this is both a challenge and an opportunity for the CFO team. Uh, extracting business value from all this data has been a challenge, is a challenge. Uh, and also ensuring the integrity of this data and, and, and gathering insights uh, is an important set of competencies that the CFO team uh, needs to possess. As we'll talk about later, CFOs are looking to harness this data, but there are challenges because this is, there are not enough financial pro professionals with the skills uh, needed. Moving on to RPA, Robotic Process Automation. That's a technology that enables a virtual robot or, or bot, right? And when we talk about uh, bots or robots, we're not thinking about the, uh, the, the robot we might see in cartoons or movies, right? These are just uh, software programs. Uh, so these, these bots execute processes by emulating human interaction with computer applications. They just mimic the clicks and keystrokes of a human user while leveraging this process documentation. The amazing thing about bots uh, is what they can do. They can log in and perform tasks in accounting and operation applications. They can retrieve data from websites, perform data entry, generate reports, read PDF documents, send emails, and so much more. And they can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 days, 52 weeks a year. And now the technology has evolved. So we have intelligent RPA, which is a sophisticated pairing of RPA and artificial intelligence. So now, now bots can learn as a process transaction. This has a tremendous opportunity potential uh, to reduce the amount of time that financial professionals spend on routine, repetitive tasks. And that potentially has the, uh, the ability to free financial professionals to perform higher value added work. So this advancement of technology has uh, led to uh, the increased use of higher, uh, more advanced data analytics. Data analytics is just the science of examining data with the purpose of creating actionable insights. It can give us the ability to react to in this increasingly complex, uh, volatile, com competitive business environment. Uh, so data analytics is about quantifying business issues, making decisions with our more accurate and fact-based data. So why is this important? When we talk about uh, today's fi finance team, we sometimes say they have four lines of sight. And those are hindsight, oversight, insight, and foresight. Hindsight involves looking back at history to influence the future in a positive way. So it might be using historical data, the uh, future cash flow projections. Oversight uh, is another traditional CFO role. Uh, it might be, for example, uh, look, monitoring the company's balance sheet uh, and cash flow. 
Insight is where business partnering uh, begins. It involves turning information into intelligence and insight. Uh, it's what starts to distinguish good companies from, from great ones. And finally, foresight is involves anticipating the future and helping organizations envision uh, the greater future. So how do we move from hindsight and oversight to insight and, and foresight? Well, we can do it with more advanced uh, data analytics. And data analytics is really nothing new as, as finance professional. It's something that we've always done, but the analytics that we've used in the past uh, are, are relatively primitive, right? We, we've used descriptive analytics that just provide insight into something that answers the question, what happened? It indicates uh, that that something has gone right or wrong, but doesn't explain why. So that's a key providing hindsight. Uh, diagnostic analytics provides an answer to why something happened. Uh, we do that when we analyze uh, variances by measuring different aspects of historical data uh, against uh, each other. That might that starts to give us some insight, but to really provide more insight, we need uh, predictive analytics, which offers insight to what is likely to happen. Uh, predictive analytics can marry artificial intelligence and big data to forecast future trends. It can use perhaps analytical models, algorithms, machine learning, and, and, and so on. And finally, to provide foresight, uh, we need prescriptive analytics, which is which answers the question, what should we do? It's not enough, enough to analyze data and glean the insights from that, but we also need to have skills in data visualization. And there's two types of data visualization. One of those is exploratory uh, data visualization where we're unsure about what lies beyond the data or in the data, and it answers the question of what, why, when, and such, and such things. For example, how did sales revenue change over time? Uh, or when does revenue increase? And the other type of data visualization are explanatory visuals, which are used when we want to communicate a specific story uh, to our audience. And as management accounts, we need to be able to effectively use both types uh, of data visualizations. And finally, we get to the business partnering role. Uh, strategic and manage strategy management and analytics align with this business partnering role. Uh, so what is a business partner? It's finance business partners are accounts who are closely with the business units to create partnership with both operations and management. Our, their role is to provide real-time support and analysis uh, to folks in operation and management, to be a trusted advisor, uh, adding an impartial uh, advice, uh, and to add value in general to the organization that will assist in uh, decision-making. So, in the introduction, there was a mention of, of the role of management accounts versus public accounts and why, uh, how, how they differed. Uh, the management account or management accounting really involves most of the financial information supply chain. As management accounts, we design the uh, financial information uh, system. We implement it, we manage it, we report it, and only at the end does public, the public accountants come in and audit the information. What we like to say is that management accounts support the creation of value rather than just measure it. And as we, as we increasingly assume a business partner role where we 
you know, move beyond reporting financial information, but also serve as key business advisors uh, to the rest of the uh, senior management team, uh, where our role will only, or the value of our role will only increase. So the CFO as, as a business partner fulfills many roles. Uh, a strategic bar business partner can serve as a catalyst to lead change with the org within the organization, can serve as a collaborator with the rest of the senior leadership team, uh, integrating uh, information, both financial and financial information to uh, help the organization uh, devise its strategy and implement it. It can serve, serve the CFO can serve as a consultant, uh, serve as an independent and objective uh, advisor uh, to managers, and can serve as a conscience uh, for the organization. And you know, we talked about the uh, uh, role of the uh, CFO in oversight of financial resources, but it goes beyond that. It's serving as a, a broader business conscience uh, throughout the organization. So this is this is, all sounds great. You know, it, it's we know that the role of CFO needs to uh, evolve, and with with the changing of the business environment, uh, it's an exciting thing because you know as we talked about, we're eliminating the uh, lower value add, uh, repetitive routine tasks. As I mentioned, it gives us more time to focus on business partner. Uh, but what's the challenge? The challenge is that there's a skills gap. So let's look at each of these three uh, factors. And the first uh, was st strategy management. We did a study uh, so some time ago with ACCA on of these senior finance leaders and looked, asked them what their priorities were. And the greatest priority of these senior finance leaders was strategy, strategy formulation implementation, and implementation. So that's, that's great news. The not so great news is that there's a gap between the importance of these different uh, responsibilities and the effectiveness of the CFO team uh, in, in, in carrying out those responsibilities. So this blue line is essentially the, the prior chart uh, just uh, depicted as a line. And the orange line here uh, ask these same financial professionals, senior financial professionals, how effective their teams were at these various, these various responsibilities. And again, strategy and business insight, which is you know, part of that, again, were the most important, uh, highest priority responsibilities of the CFO team. But we see that in terms of effectiveness, they, 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 were, uh, uh, they, was, they were lagging. So this is certainly an area that uh, we as a profession need to increase our, our, our competencies. But what about uh, technology and, and data analytics? Uh, we've looked at the importance of these in transforming the role of the CFO team and in the management accounting profession. Uh, IMA research has shown that the biggest factor in successfully implementing technology and analytics is having people with the right skills. So this is a chart from another study that we did. And again, it shows the biggest contrib contributors to successful data initiatives. And by far the factors that contributed the most, again, with having people with the right skills. The study similarly found that not having people with the right skills was the largest impediment to successful implementation. And that's you know, no, should be no shock. 
but there is a great, there's a shortage of staff with the necessary skills in uh, technology and data analytics. And this shortage is expected to grow. So as shown uh, in the blue box here, this is from uh, another study we did. Nearly, uh, this is a, a study of, again, senior financial professionals that we did with Deloitte. And it found that nearly 76% of respondents felt that their accounting processes were less than 75% automated. But as indicated in this gray box, more than 90% of the respondents indicated that they feel the level of transaction processing decrease and become more analytical, automated and analytical over the next five years. So not only is there a current shortage of financial professionals with these data analytical uh, skills and technology skills, but companies are going to significantly increase the automation uh, of their processes and the analytical skills they need to analyze data over the next five years. And that'll only in de increase the shortage of uh, co competent staff. And then finally, getting to business partnering. Uh, the reality is that we're failing to keep pace uh, in this area as well, to keep pace with the changing demands to be true uh, business partners. And there's three impediments here, uh, leadership and strategic alignment, technology, and again, the lack of, of talent. Some years ago, we did a, uh, another study with ACCA on how to be a better business partner, how to go about uh, being a business partner. We suggested nine actions, uh, business partnering actions that the finance function could take. It's anchored in three core components. One was to create the, the mandate, uh, have the organization understand the, that CFOs can assume a business partnering role. Uh, second was fixing uh, the information, making sure we have the information that we need to be a business partner and not focus on uh, relevant information. Again, there's so much data out there now, we need to know what's relevant. And finally, deploying the talent. Make sure we have a finance function that's effectively organized and have staff that have the minds, the business partnering uh, mindset. So the finance team and prepare for this business partnering role by developing the skills that are needed. And as I've just mentioned <laughs> often in the past few, few minutes, uh, there's a, a lack of skills in the, especially in analytics uh, and strategy. And strong communication skills and an understanding of the business are also uh, critically uh, important. So, uh, so management accounts can prepare for this change to becoming a business partner by building those foundation skills that I just mentioned, developing their interpersonal skills, uh, developing informal communication with other people in the organization, understanding the business, and as I just mentioned, educating uh, the organization. In terms of skill development, uh, a good place to identify uh, gaps could be uh, the IMA's Magic Accounting Competency Framework. And there are others out there uh, as well. But, you know, obviously I'm most familiar with uh, the IMA framework. And it uh, outlines six what we call competency domains that every management accounting professional needs uh, to have career success. And uh, it includes the factors that we've discussed today. So I just wanted to go through those six uh, briefly. Uh, this strategic management. So these, this includes the competencies required to envision the future, lead the strategic planning process, guide decisions, 
manage risk and monitor performance. Again, this is an emergence, merging role of the CFO function. More traditional one is reporting and control. Uh, a little important, of course. It includes the competencies required to measure and report the organization's performance and compliance with relevant standards and regulations. Uh, an emerging competency uh, required of the CFO team is technology and, and analytics. I would just note that in our previous iteration of this framework, uh, we did not have this as a high level competency domain, but the profession changed so much in the, I think it's three years since the initial um, draft of the framework, we, we thought appropriate to include this as a separate domain. It includes the competencies required to manage technology and analyze data to enhance organizational success. Fourth, which has always been important is business acumen, acumen and operations. It includes the competencies required to contribute as a cross-functional business partner to transform company-wide operations. Next is leadership, which is competencies required to collaborate with others and inspire teams to achieve organizational goals. And of course, finally, and not least, uh, is uh, a competency that underlies all, all of the rest of the competencies and should permeate everything we do. And that's professional ethics and values. It's the competencies required to demonstrate the professional values, ethical behavior, and legal compliance essential to a sustainable business model. And what I'd like to do now is just highlight uh, Two of these to a little deeper into these two of these competency domains. One is the technology and analytics uh, competency domain. It includes in our in our uh, framework four competencies. One is information system, where Magic accounts use technology to efficiently support operational and financial processes, solve problems, analyze data, and enhance business performance. We need competencies in data governance to make sure uh, the availability, utility, integrity, and security of data. Uh, with all of the uh, cases of uh, companies' data uh, being uh, hacked or, or held for ransom. I think the importance of this uh, competency uh, cannot be overemphasized. Uh, data analytics, we've talked about, extraction, transformation, and analysis of data to gain insights and improve predictions or decision-making. And data visualization, again, we, we've, we, we've uh, stored the data, we've uh, transformed it, we, extracted it, we've analyzed it. Again, we need to communicate it effectively to the decision makers uh, in that state of visualization. And then finally, the second competency domain that I wanted to focus on is strategic management. And that includes the eight uh, competencies listed here. And I'll just highlight three of those. Uh, one is strategic and tactical planning. Uh, in most, in many, in a growing number of organizations, the CFO, the CFO's team is leading the strategic uh, planning process, uh, and this is uh, you know, obviously a critical, a critical uh, responsibility of the CFO. Uh, we have strategic cost management, uh, and it's no longer uh, just reporting costs and, and, and controlling costs. But we have to understand cost drivers. We have to engage in cost modeling uh, to uh, help enhance the organizational uh, decision making. And then finally, there's enterprise risk management. Again, this is a relatively new responsibility of many CFO, already many finance functions, where we're identifying, assessing, and managing risks within the organization. So, there are additional competencies that management accounts will need to have. 
And IMA recently published uh, what we call the profitability analytics model developed by PACE, or the Profitability Analytics Center of Excellence. Uh, it views the domain of the management accountant is operating at the intersection of cost management or managerial costing, uh, revenue management and investment management. Uh, I think CMA Sri Lanka had a, uh, a webinar a little while ago related to this, uh, to revenue management. It's um, a topic that is perhaps not as familiar to us as cost management, investment management. But, need, but needs to be. It's not enough just to control or minimize costs, but we need to really look at organizational profitability holistically and managing costs in the context of, of managing revenues uh, and, and investments uh, as well. Just wanna mention that the PACE profitability analytics model uh, it provides a framework that, that is designed to provide a practical roadmap for management accountants to acquire these, these, the knowledge of their business and take an active business partner role in every key area of the, of the organization. So again, this is part of becoming that, that business partner. This is a high level diagram of their PACE's framework. Uh, there's more detail available, but I'll, I'll uh, just give you the website uh, address of PACE if you want to uh, find out more. So, you know, we've talked about the hard skills and uh, those are certainly uh, critical to be a competent management accounting accountant, but we also need to remember that the soft skills uh, are, are important. And to be a true business partner uh, and add value to the organization, uh, we need to have leadership and communication skills. We need to be uh, able to communicate with operations and senior leadership, uh, senior decision makers, and of course, being uh, technically, technically proficient. So one thing that many in the profession are concerned are about is the impact of RPA and other technologies on our profession. Uh, it will eliminate many lower level jobs, uh, but that is just going to create the opportunity for um, higher value added activities. So ro robots can't do everything. They, it's hard to automate uh, activities around managing, developing people uh, and other creative work. So uh, we can view automation and such as uh, uh, a challenge to the profession, but more as an opportunity. And of course, the human element will always be important. We need to develop critical thinking skills and our professional judgment. So if we want to be uh, future-proof, what do we need to do? We need to develop an appropriate mindset, develop enhanced communication and relationship management skills, develop the ability to think critically, develop our strategic management and thinking skills, develop enhanced risk management skills, focus on innovation and change management, develop skills in data analytics, and consider obtaining a professional certification. So I want to end by this call to action. We need to clearly upskill uh, in the finance and accounting profession. It's responsibility of all the stakeholders here. Practitioners obviously need to make sure that their skills that they have are, are fit for uh, the new environment. Companies need to assist their, their staff in obtaining these skills. Academics need to make sure their uh, curriculum provides uh, these, the, the entry level skills needed for these entry level jobs. And accounting associations uh, need to help their, their members uh, acquire these skills as well. 
So I know there's uh, some academics in the audience, so I'll, I'll leave you with these uh, questions that you could ask uh, about your, your school's curriculum uh, in, in terms of uh, adequately preparing your students for their future. You know, to what extent does your curriculum prepare students for their long-term career success? Uh, does your curriculum reflect the business partnering role of management accountants? To what extent does the curriculum cover essential technology skills? To what extent is ethics, professional ethics, integrated in the curriculum? Uh, interpersonal and communication skills are increasingly important. Uh, is your school rethinking its coverage of these competencies? To which, what extent does your curriculum and instructional methodologies formulate the development of higher order learning skills? Does your curriculum help students develop competencies in a integrated manner? And does your school's business model and offerings reflect the changing education landscape? So I know that was fairly quick, but my slides will be available for anyone who wants them uh, later. So thank you, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, it's a pleasure being here and I'm available for any questions you might have. Thank you. Uh Thank you very much, uh, Dr. F, for that uh, very, very uh, important and detailed uh, presentation uh, that was made. Actually, the, uh, the, the, where you gave us a revised framework for the management accounting profession, the very important uh, skills that are required. Uh, I just want to tell you, because only it was yesterday that we had uh, one of the uh, skill development, uh, the award ceremony for one of the skill development programs, which we called the Speechcraft program. And I was very happy that uh, what you mentioned has been really uh, embedded in our program. And in That's addition great. to that, uh, I said earlier about the uh, bringing in the data analytics and the uh, information technology, which I think uh, also uh, things that we have taken. So I'm happy that uh, we have been able to make uh, certain adjustments in keeping with, with what you have said. So I'm sure that uh, we have some experts who are here with us, as I said earlier. Uh, can I ask uh, Professor uh, Ho Yu Ki? I think uh, he is uh, really going to be the uh, chairman of our academic board, uh, maybe to make his expert comments. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Ralph Lawson, for a very good uh, talk as it is. I think you have highlighted some of the key issues that we are struggling with. Right, uh, in, at the Singapore Institute of Technology, uh, I look after the skills future uh, part of the education, namely the adult education. And also as the cluster director, I look after the accountancy program. So we have been constantly looking at our curriculum and ask the question, how do we ensure that our curriculum is modernized to keep pace with the changes in time? So I think you highlighted actually three key things that uh, we need to think about. Firstly, is always the so-called the core technical accounting skills. Uh, you can't run away from the core technical accounting skills. The second dimension that we unfortunately has to overlay these uh, core accounting skills are the soft skills, right? the social skills as some may call it. And uh, in the recent years, uh, we also have to introduce a third dimension, which are the digital skills the technology skills. Of course, our greatest challenge has always been uh, given the accounting program, when we put in a lot of things, what do we take out? So that is one, one, one challenge that we have to deal with. The second challenge that we have to deal with is how deep do you want the technology skills to be? So I, as a, as a uh, professor, I have all, I've been championing that whether we should teach programming to our accounting students. Uh, my faculty all rebel. <laughs> my faculty all protest in that sense. They say uh, they need the data visualization. They need the data analytics, but they don't require what we so-call the hardcore programming skills. I take a slightly different position, right? In the sense that uh, teaching the kids how to do programming actually open up the world of possibilities to them. But unfortunate challenge too, is that we just don't have enough time. So I really like what you say tonight. Uh, uh, you have highlighted some of the key issues that both the professional accounting bodies 
both the universities or any schools or institutions of higher education that are involved in training accountants will have to sit up and look at. But the challenge will always be where do we find the time see, and the resources uh, to get this done? Can I, I just respond to that? And I, I completely agree with everything that you you just said and and i know a lot of schools are struggling to add data analytics courses into their curriculum and it's not only a question of faculty resources but also where in the curriculum how can you fit that in the curriculum and i would i would i would make the case that management accounting is the ideal delivery vehicle for data analytical skills so Maybe we can think of it not as an either or like the situation, but delivering them together. So I, I think that's that's a possible solution uh, to to that. But you're absolutely right. The hard skills, the soft skills, and the data analytical skills are are key for professionals nowadays. Absolutely. And programming, that. you know, programming. I I do agree with you. Some. Some amount of programming is a good skill to have. Not that you're going to use that specific programming language in your in your in your uh, profession in your professional career, but it's a way of structuring thinking, right? It's it's, it's and uh, being able to visualize problem solving. So I think that is great to have if you if you can fit it in the program. So Thank you, Doctor F. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. See, one of the thought patterns I have is the fact that you see, uh, in any universities or even uh, organization or professional body, we have limited resources. So one of the things I would like to champion is particularly in terms of online learning. See, why can't we create a community where we can learn from each other, or the experts are able to deliver online lectures? teaching the people to do data analytics. Your school has done something. My school has done something. The Sri Lanka community has done something. If only we can pull our resources together and, and curate almost a, a, a kind of curriculum where the, the accountants can come in to pick up whatever pieces that they need. Uh, we, we, none of us need to duplicate this. I mean, and with today's technology, the online delivery could be as good as you can ever have. You see, right? So that's why I'm hoping, uh, particularly like in Sri Lanka, I was hoping is that if you can link out, uh, for example, with foreign educators or foreign trainers, as it is, uh, then you're not confined only to your local Sri Lanka pool or even Singapore, our local pool. We're very short of, of expert data analytics uh, uh, trainers, as it is, right? So if we can leverage this international community, I, I think we, we're able to deliver this education to a larger number of people with a smaller resource base than what we used to be used to do in a face-to-face -face education, right? What do you think? <laughs> I mean, there's 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 organizations like Coursera that actually do that, right? But they're not universities, so hmm. I mean, it would seem a very feasible thing to do. And there are leading faculty that teach courses. Uh, yeah. Through these, these through these organizations that they're, they're, they're out there already. It's just forming the partnerships, I think, to, to, to enable what you're suggesting, I think is very feasible. Thank you, Professor Ho. I think uh, you gave a very, very uh, maybe important and very, very great idea. Uh, of course, universities may be difficult to have an international university. I don't know where you can set it up, but certainly Certainly, as far as the professional bodies, I think uh, we can form that linkage, and I'm sure that you will be able to give the lead to that and then uh, take it forward. Uh, so can I have, uh, I think Mr. Raman is waiting to ask some questions here, Mr. Raman. Uh, thank you, Professor Lakshman. <clears throat> Dr. Riff, that was a, a very insightful and uh, visionary presentation from you. Uh, I have a very quick question uh, posed to you in uh, in the context of what you have said right now. Basically, the leaders of the management accounting bodies, like uh, Professor Lakshman Watawala in Sri Lanka, 
and in, in India and Bangladesh, Pakistan and few other countries, basically face a, a classic conundrum of leading the management accounting institution into a sweet spot. And that conundrum I would describe like this. If you increase the content of the technology and data, you are in the danger of positioning yourself in competition with an extremely vibrant body of information technologies or data scientists as they are emerging right now. So you can't trample on that space because they are already powerful. So if you try to expand in the dimension of strategy and uh, management, already very strong and vibrant management institutions are there. And it's very difficult to carve out a niche in the presence of very powerful management institutes, particularly in countries like India. For the fear of these two, if you continue to be in your, the cradle where you are born, the management accounting basically is born out of, let us say, the accounting cradle. If you continue to get stuck in that, definitely there is a risk of being swallowed by the compliance-oriented accounting, financial accounting community because they would like to be the big brother of anything. So these three points of pressure are always weighing very heavily in the minds of the leaders of management accounting bodies uh, like Professor Lakshman and in other countries. So in this conundrum, classical conundrum, how do you take a right path so that you find out a sweet spot of a strategy for a management accounting body so that you do not trample on any of this space, nor you position yourself in competing with these three elements, but still come out with the unique positioning that this is what the management accounting stands for in this digital era. This is the pathway which I am looking for. How do we do that? Can we get some insights from your thoughts on uh, this pathway, which is very, very critical for all of us? Sure. Uh I actually wrote an article on, on that some time ago. And uh, looking at that addressed that issue. The data analytical and technology skills that management accountants need to possess uh, will vary depending on their, their job, their, their position. But, but generically, we don't, want bank accountants to be necessarily data scientists. And that's, that's the question that you're asking, I believe. So the way we view it, management accountants have uh, a unique role. And I forget what I called it in the article, it's like data interpreter or, 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 or something to that effect, that they can serve as an intermediary between data scientists and, and managers. So data scientists are great at crunching the data, so to speak, but they need the management accountants to understand what management's issues are and to ex translate that into something that the data scientists can then analyze. And conversely, once the data scientist has analyzed the data and come with some conclusions, it's the role of the management accountant then to interpret that and, 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 and see something that is understandable to the management team. So it, it's, it's, Management accounts definitely need enhanced te technological and data analytical skills, but we don't have to be data scientists. And again, we there's still a unique role that manage, that management account can, can play uh, in its in this new evolving environment. Thank you, uh, Dr. Reeves. I think. Uh, uh, we have Dr. Nuan. Dr. Nuan, you need to make any uh, comments or questions? Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Atapal. Um, and uh, Dr. F, thank you very much for your insightful uh, presentation. 
and i think uh, you know as a as an educator we have always felt the need for the expansion of the role of the management accountant and let me quickly voice some uh, something from the local management accounting um, profession uh, as an educator from the university system in sri lanka now uh, actually i represent the university of sri jawardhanapur that is the largest uh, university in sri lanka and also i am from the department of accounting that is the first academic accounting degree program in the country so which was introduced in 1991 from the inception of the department uh, we have uh, emphasized on the skill development in in different areas and uh, we have actually focused on four areas when it comes to skill development one is uh, uh, the the technical side then again uh, we have focused on um, leadership skills as you mentioned and also business communication then um, personal development and finally we have also focused on uh, learning to learn skills that is focusing on the future and how they can uh, embrace the future changes so we have uh, we have done so many curriculum revisions to to further fine tune the skill development program and uh, now one one of the challenges we had was that uh, how to how to incorporate new knowledge like you know forensic accounting big data analytics ai sustainability accounting and so forth together with the core 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 knowledge in management accounting so how do we because we cannot uh, we cannot really ignore the the core areas in accounting or management accounting at the same time we have a challenge to incorporate the skill development activities as well as the new areas as you mentioned like technological development and so forth because at the end of the day we have maybe x number of subjects and limited time with the students so do you have any ideas to share or how to incorporate the is new developments and the expanding role of management accountant the curricula while maintaining the core or areas in accounting sure then that this kind of relates to that first question you know how do you, there's only so much time in, in the classroom or in the, so much room in the curriculum and how do you parcel that out and you know the 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 business environment is changing at a increasing rate right and we all know that and how do you prepare your students right with the competencies they'll need 5 or 10 or 20 years from now and so i think it's you know even when i was a professor 20 years ago it was always a you know stand, an issue you know even with like the financial accounting standards and they were you know, you know uh, rapidly changing back then and it, it, i think it comes down to really i think teach them to learn to learn right teach them to be able to learn material to be uh, have an open mind have an open mindset uh, and this whole area of, of continuing professional education is becoming increasingly important in, in our in our profession you know maybe 30 years ago you could you know, go to university and <laughs> not open a book for the rest of your career perhaps but you know but now uh, you have to be in almost in a constant learning mode and that's why you know all of our professional certifications have this continuing education requirement because we all understand that um that we need to keep our our skills constantly updated so you know i i i think you're you're on the right track i mean with what you said that you need to um you need to uh focus on uh, from these soft skills and 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 provide a framework of of the harder skills you know when i was a chairman of my accounting department i would talk to the, the the employers and they would say you don't have to teach them all of the well, fasbs all the uh, accounting standards um you know well we can teach them that we we need you to teach them how to think and i think that's what sort it of comes comes down to uh, you have to be judicious in 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 the in 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 that what you teach in terms of the that kind of knowledge you know we, it's 
the accounting standards perhaps are the most perishable of knowledge. What, what, what will, will, will keep the students in, in good stead over their careers is just again, learning to think and learning uh, how to analyze and, and, and so on. So that's, that's how I would answer your, your question. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Riff. Uh, Mr. Hennack, you have any question uh, or comment? Uh, Professor, I can just ask a general question uh, from Dr. Riff. Uh, Dr. Riff, you mentioned that uh, uh, since the publication of the competency framework, the field of management accounting has uh, experienced considerable change. And uh, foresight is where finance uh, professionals play a leading role in anticipating the future and helping their organization. So how do we make our members aware of this? Uh, uh, is it through seminars of this nature or include such things in the curriculum? Uh, I think it's all of the above. <laughs> so it, it's, and you know, this kind of relates to the, that slide I had about the role that all of us have to play in making sure the management accounting professionals have the skills they need to, to succeed. And as, you know, as, as management accounting associations, uh, we need to make sure our, our curriculum is, is up to date, right? But then just having this document is not sufficient. We need to uh, hopefully provide resources that our members can use to update their skills, you know, such as this webinar. And I'm sure there's other resources that you, that you offer as well. So it, it's, uh, you know, publications as well. I'm sure, sure you have, have those as well. So whatever, you know, we all, we all learn differently and we all have different time pressures and, and, and so on. So uh, whatever means works best for your, for your members, I, I would, uh, you know, encourage you to, to use. Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. F. Uh, can I hand over to uh, Mr. Guchira, uh, who's going to handle the Q&A from our particip participants and maybe any comments that you may have. So, Guchira, can you take over and field any questions that are there? Yes, thank you, Professor. Dr. F, there were a couple of questions that have come in the chat box as well as in Q&A. So, I'll first take the question that is in Q&A. Uh, he's asking about the importance of effective communication to solve problems in organizations. We see so many people raising questions without actually giving solutions. So what can you comment about that? Uh, could, you, could you repeat that question for me? Yeah, the, uh, the person is asking, now in your presentation you have mentioned about the communication is important to be a business partner. So the person is asking, so many people uh, would want to be effective communicators, but then nobody comes out, comes out with solutions. So what is your view in that regard? Oh my, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are uh, courses out there on, on effective communication. I mean, it, communication uh, is, can be both verbal and visual. And that's where uh, the, uh, the latter of those two is, is where data visualization come, come, come into play, right? And I, I know at IMA, we've developed uh, reports, so we've done webinars and uh, on, on data visualization techniques. Uh, we've, I've personally written articles on data vis visualization, ways to effectively communicate uh, financial and non-financial information. So uh, but again, and also, uh, there are resources on, on verbal communication as well. You know, understand your your audience, and and, and who what the, what they're looking for, what and 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 so on. So, you know, it's it's uh, um, there are, there are resources out there uh, to to uh, become an effective communicator. And I know many schools, including when I was a you know. We integrated uh, communication into, throughout our program. So we had students both present reports uh, verbally and 
and written manner to uh, work on their communication skills. And that's something that, you know, many of us should try to enhance uh, on a continuous basis. I think uh, if I can just uh, make a few comments on that. Now, CMA has two ways of making people skillful in the communications. One is, of course, the speech craft program that we are providing uh, mainly for the students. Other one is the Toastmasters Club, which they can join, and then that will also give them the opportunity to improve uh, their skills and also the communication ability. So these two are currently available, uh, and we are working on that, and we have a big demand. Uh, for that at the moment. Doctor, the second question is about the importance of data governance, data mining, and of course you mentioned about data visualization to be an effective business partner and to foster the skills for the future. Now this person is asking how much of data should we capture? How to manage the balance? Should we capture the data that is required for present or should we capture data that is required for present as well as for the future? So I mean, that's, that's a, a great question. And, you know, the, the, the saying, there's a saying that data is the new gold, the gold, new oil and new gold. I mean, it's, it's really an asset, right? That, that can be monetized and, and create value. So in terms of how much data should an organization capture, uh, and I've actually written another article on, on, on this as well. Uh, really, there needs to be uh, data governance, you know, data mining visualization, the whole uh, data strategy needs to be part of an overall strategic plan. What is the, what is the vision of the organization? What do you know, is it, uh, you know, what is it important, what's important to it to know to uh, affect its, its, uh, its strategy. So, you know, for a retailer, we, this, we may want to capture, you know, sales by customer. If, if we're a grain trader, perhaps not. So again, it really, but well, we might want to capture data on, on weather, for example. So it really, um, you need to, but this is a good question because we shouldn't just willy-nilly start collecting every piece of data out there. It's just too overwhelming. So we need to really step back, think strategically about what, what is our strategic plan? How are we going to implement it? What data will we need to do that now and in the future? Because it's so easy to just get lost in the data and be overwhelmed by it. Correct. Doctor, third question is this about actually financial models. The question is asking the financial models that you can use for company performance analysis. So, so what financial models should you use? And this, this is um, one thing I really like about that profitability analytics framework from, from, from PACE because it really provides a, a framework for, for, for modeling. And so many organizations do cost modeling that is ineffective. Uh, and the PACE model talks about needing to look at causality, cause and effect relationships in modeling. Uh, it, includes the idea that you need to do revenue modeling as well and incorporating uh, investment modeling as well. Um, so it's, in so many organizations, F, fp &A, financial plan analysis is, is not done well as well. And there's often a disconnect between the operational modeling that they do and the uh, finance models that are used. And, you know, the, the, again, it goes back to this idea of causality and uh, we, our financial modeling, and again, this is right from the PACE document, the uh, 
financial models that we do, the cost modeling that we do, based initially on operational modeling, you know, looking at uh, what are the drivers of our costs, what are the capacities of our of our resources, and so on. And once we've gotten our operational models developed, then we can attach monetary units to those. So again, it's there are it it's not necessarily a question of what finance what models will be. Sure, he is also asking whether there is a model, universal model that can be applied for all sectors, financial model. So, so I was just about to answer that. So it's not really a question of the, I, I didn't say what the question do financial modeling accurately versus, yeah. no, there is no universal financial model, but the financial, but you, whatever financial model is most appropriate to your industry, you should implement well and that's where most organizations fail. Thank you, Doctor. So, Professor, those are the questions that have come yeah, from the audience. Okay. Uh, you have any specific uh, question, uh, from your side? Before we... uh, no, Professor. Basically, now, yeah. as you have uh, mentioned, now in our curriculum, we have integrated uh, data modeling, uh, as you have mentioned earlier, at the very beginning of the presentation, we have raised recently uh, uh, we have done certain changes in our curriculum. So with those changes, as well as with our speech craft program and with the Toastmaster Club initiations, actually we have done uh, quite uh, quite a bit of things that Dr. F has mentioned today about the changes that are required for a future business partner. So I think Professor, now uh, with what, what, what we had done, uh, we are in the right direction, so maybe we have to see, based on what Dr. F has mentioned today, whether we have, whether we can do any more changes in order to upgrade our curriculum for the benefit of future members. Thank you, thank you, uh, Rujira, and uh, I think uh, uh, we wish to thank uh, Dr. F uh, Lawson for this uh, really uh, maybe giving us new thinking and new ideas, and I'm also happy to see that uh, CMA. And Sri Lanka is also going in the right direction and maybe we have a few more areas that we need to look into. So before I uh, invite Mr. Hennaika Bandar to give the vote of thanks, uh, can I have maybe, uh, uh, Professor Ho, you, you like to make your final comments uh, before we close up? Okay, uh, actually I wanted to answer the question concerning data, right? I think the world is constantly changing. In the good old days, uh, because of limitations in computer capacity, every byte matters, right? Uh, a, 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 the storage of data was very, very critical. But as we move into a new world where storage of data is not an issue anymore, so the cost uh, lowers. But however, we are going to embrace a different form of uh, so-called responsibility. The more data you have, right, particularly when you lose them, the greater will be your liabilities as it is, right? And also when you have more data, uh, not only will it increase in terms of storage space, but you also increase in terms of complexity for you to be able to mine those data. Right? So it, it, it must be a balancing uh, game. And I really like what uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Larson say, right? Management accounting is probably is one space that has a greatest potential for us to use uh, data analytics, right? See, I, I remember when I was a doctoral student at Carnegie Mellon, right? Uh, my professor, Professor Yuji Ijiri, used to envision a world in which accountants uh, will see data like a centroid of data. That means we can do bookkeeping on a continuous basis because the accounting system and all the data is online, right? So I, I thought to, to me, that was probably about 20 years ago. Uh, it was like a dream. But when you look at the data, the way data are being stored today, right? And you look at the continuous decision that we have to make and with the advent in technology, maybe this day is, such a day is possible. By the way, we're already doing this, right? Oh, some of us wear Apple Watch an Apple phone or a phone that, that actually keeps all the medical records of, of us online all the time, you see, right? Would accounting or management accounting go down that road? And I, I have a strange feeling, all right, that uh, it probably will. It probably will. So 
uh, my advice and my encouragement to a young people, or even to this uh, profession of management accountant, is that we really have to keep moving forward, right? Looking specifically how technology will interface with our so-called uh, our profession. And I would like to come back to the same thought pattern. One of the things that we always have an advantage is that we are human, right? Now we must leverage on the fact that being human, we are creative. We are creative. And that is what the world will still always need us because of our humanities. Uh, that will be uh, my thoughts. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ho. So may I invite Mr. Ennai Kabanare to give the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Professor. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of CMA, I'm glad to propose this vote of thanks after a successful seminar conducted by Dr. Rip Lovishan. As mentioned by our president in his uh, welcome speech, Dr. Rip is not a stranger to CMA. He has helped CMA in the past in numerous ways in the conducting CPD programs. With that note, I would like to thank Dr. Rip uh, for his insightful presentation and sharing his experiences to educate us on the topic of management accounting, education, new imperatives. I'm sure that uh, the guidance provided by him will assist all of you to enhance your knowledge and skill, and more importantly, to make use of them in your workplace. Let me also thank our president, Professor Watermeller, for organizing this seminar under the CPD programs to improve the skills of our members as well as other participants. I would like to appreciate the contribution and participation of our council members, members of Academic Advisory Board, Professor Ho, Mr. Raman, and Dr. Nuan Gunratne for the discussion. Finally, let me thank all our members, members of uh, SAFA member bodies, and others for your participation, and the CMA team for the support extended to conduct a timely important webinar. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hennayaka. Uh, we are very happy. And uh, Dr. Ref, uh, Lawson, once again, I think uh, we are all very appreciative of this uh, topic of management accounting education because, uh, as you mentioned, as operational people, it's very, very important how we can develop it. And uh, I'm sure that you will continue uh, to have links with us and that you will help us to build our management accounting profession. Of course, we have our uh, stars also here with us uh, who have been uh, working with us throughout uh, from the whole, Mr. Raman. Dr. Noan, and of course, our own council members, our vice president, and the other members who have been helping us. And uh, as uh, Mr. Ennaik mentioned, let me thank all uh, uh, those who are in the academic field, because this is really meant for their area. But uh, not only academic, but also those who are in the corporate sector, in the training area, which uh, where they need to do a lot, uh, is their feedback, and also to ensure that uh, there is continuing, continuing professional development like what we are doing, which will help all of us. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. F. And I'm sure that all of us, uh, as I said, uh, appreciate very much uh, your kind presence today. I know it's quite early in the morning there, although it is evening here. And very much surprised uh, time differences, maybe Professor Ho in Singapore, then Dr. Nuan in Australia. So all of them for joining us and wish you all the best. And of course, uh, Keep well and safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Good night. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Gajendra. Thanks, Mr. Naika. Thank you, Gajendra. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye.